Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the CROMEC webinar on the Autonomous Airborne Radiation Monitoring System. Thank you to all of you for taking the time out to participate in this webinar. And it's great to see that so many people had signed up and it's great to see so many of you here watching today. So just a little bit about how this is all going to run. Um, the webinar will take the form of a presentation where I'll outline the ARM system and the different op options for its use. Uh, throughout the presentation, you'll be able to ask questions via the Q&A feature. Uh, this is just a normal Q&A feature on Zoom. I think it's located at the top of your screen. Um, at the end of the webinar, I'll go through as many of these questions as I possibly can. Um, any answers that I don't manage, any questions that I don't manage to answer, we can, I'll get the answers back to you offline to make sure that all those questions are answered. And just as a note, the webinar is recording, so this will be sent out to everyone after, uh, after the webinar has finished. So just a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Eve Perler. I'm a product manager here at Chromec and look after the nuclear products in the civil nuclear and nuclear security markets. I work very closely with customers to understand their application and their requirements and to kind of understand the market need a little bit further. So just a little bit about what this webinar is going to include and what sort of content we're going to go over. Um, just a little bit about Chromec, who we are as a company, um, what the ARM system is, is and what it's all about with the benefits of the aerial and unmanned mapping. The different system layout and how the architecture all works within the ARM system. The different user applications that we can go through and how the ARM system has been used and how it can be used. And we can go through all the different detector options, software options, communications options and data hosting options and how this, how the ARM system can be tailored to meet needs. And then, as I mentioned, we're gonna go through the Q&A at the end. I'm gonna answer as many questions as I can during that time. Um, any questions that I don't answer, again, we'll get back to you on the answers with those. So just a little bit about Chromec and who we are. Uh, Chromec provides radiation detection solutions globally in three markets. Uh, this includes nuclear detection, medical imaging and security screening. Chromex, a UK US company. We're headquartered in the northeast of England, but we have extensive manufacturing sites in both the UK and the US, and we sell our products globally. So Chromex has an extensive portfolio of products. Here I've listed some of our civil nuclear portfolio separated into four different categories. So first, our handheld isotope detection systems. Uh, this includes our D3S and Raymond 10 detectors. Both detectors can be used to detect, measure, identify, and analyze radionuclides with access to spectral data and dose information. I'll just jump now to our nuclear power plant monitoring and decommissioning. Uh, these are products used for air sampling and measuring the activity of radionuclides in filters, filter papers and beakers. So this includes things like our quant for GR1 and our quant air. We also have our high resolution spectroscopic detectors uh, in that second column. So these are used within the ARM system. So I'll go into all of these detectors in much more detail during the presentation. And obviously in that last column there, the focus of our presentation is the ARM system, where remote monitoring and characterization can be performed using a spectroscopic detector on a drone or a rover to give you a really accurate map of the area. So what is the ARM system? The Autonomous Airborne Radiation Monitoring System was developed in partnership with Imatech and the University of Bristol it can be used to provide an unmanned mapping solution. It's small size and lightweight make it ideal for use on a UAV or a rover. So as you can see, it's got a weight of less than one kilogram, making it very lightweight, so it can be accommodated on pretty much any multi-rotor drone. 
using the adaptable mounting plate. Um, this adaptable mounting plate means that it can be really easily installed on any drone. The data, uh, including both the counts per second and the spectral data that's collected by the ARM system can be viewed in real time or processed after the flight has finished. And this means that you can build up a count rate heat map in addition to acquiring all of that spectral data. It's just a little bit about the ARM system layout and the different sort of sections of the physical system. So it's weight, as we've said, it's less than one kilogram, very lightweight system. The, it incorporates a radiation detector. There's multiple different detector options available, which includes those high resolution spectroscopic detectors that I will talk about a little bit later. Uh, you've got single or dual detector configuration options available depending on the, the need. There's LiDAR and GPS systems inbuilt there, which gives you height and location information uh, to tell you where the ARM system is in space. You've also got um, different power requirements, including a rechargeable internal battery, which lasts approximately three and a half hours on a single charge. The ARM system can also be powered directly from the drone if that's required. As I said as well, the universal mounting plate makes it really easy to install the ARM system on an existing drone. Okay, this system layout. So on this slide, we have a block diagram to give you a little bit more information on how data is stored onto and how it's transferred from the ARM unit. I'll be going into much more detail on all these different communications and data hosting options later in the webinar. But this diagram gives you an idea of how the different elements of the system all fit together. So going into the system, we have the spectroscopic data from the inbuilt detector, GNSS and LiDAR information to give you information about where the drone is in space and how high it's flying. The data is uh, stored on the ARM system and it can be uh, transferred from the ARM system in several different ways, including via USB, 4G, a Wi-Fi access point and radio communications. The data can either be sent directly to a computer or sent to a server, a, a server to be hosted there. So in terms of viewing the data, there are two options. The data can be transferred through a desktop app and it can be viewed there or to a mobile based application and viewed there. Again, I'm going to go through both of these options in more detail later on, but just as a note that it can be viewed on either desktop application or a phone application. So the ARM system can integrate easily with different vehicles and UAVs. The system can be easily used with multi-rotor drones and rovers, as we've mentioned before. It's also an option to use a system with um, fixed wing drones. And we can also work with customers to incorporate the system into their own, own device or existing technology if that's required. So what are the benefits of unmanned mapping? Um, unmanned mapping offers a lot of different benefits. One of the key ones is its repeatability. So a drone, for example, can be pre-programmed to fly the exact same path. Uh, this ensures that measurements can be taken over several flights and can be directly compared to see if any different changes had occurred. So if you can see if anything has changed from the last flight that you've taken, you can directly compare those because you know the exact same path has been followed. <laughs> um, it incorporates the sensitive and accurate detector technology proven in the field, already used in civil applications, so that you can ensure that that heat map that you're seeing is really accurate and that spectral data that you're getting can be relied upon. Another benefit is that it reduces the amount of radiation shielded by an operator because someone doesn't have to physically be with that unit. So the water in a person's body isn't shielding any of the radiation. And probably the, the most important benefit is the fact that it reduces the risk to the operator. So an operator doesn't have to be right next to the detector as it's detecting all of that, all of the radiation. They can be at safe location and they're not being exposed to that high levels of dose. So this gives you the ability to 
map areas that have really high dose rates and why a human wouldn't be able to go to that area because it would just be too unsafe. So the next three slides, <clears throat> I'm gonna introduce three case studies where the ARM system has already been used to offer great benefits to the customer. So of course, we're all aware of the terrible nuclear disaster at Chernobyl in 1986. So the worst contaminated area in the disaster was the Red Forest, comprising a 10 square kilometer area around the nuclear plant, making it the most radiologically contaminated area on the planet. Mapping of this region has so far been completely impossible due to the life-threatening dose experienced in the region. So there was no way any human could ever go into the Red Forest without getting very, very ill. Maps of the wider exclusion zone have been conducted. However, they offer poor resolution and haven't adequately give you a clear image of the most affected areas. Using an ARM system, it was possible to build up the most comprehensive map ever produced of the region. The pilot's safety wasn't compromised in any way. They were able to stand at a safe location and fly the drone over an area to build an aerial map without actually exposing themselves to those very, very high levels of radiation. So you can see here, the heat map shown here illustrates the levels of radiation in counts per second, but every point recorded on this map also has associated spectral data, which can be viewed. So another application here, in 2011, the world was again confronted with a nuclear disaster at Fukushima in Japan. This video illustrates how the ARM system technology can be used in conjunction with 3D imaging to build up a picture of the contaminated site. So this particular area in the video is a waste dump site used to store topsoil, which was contaminated in the initial nuclear fallout. Nuclear material was found to be leaking from the waste bags, meaning that quick and decisive action was required to ensure that the cleanup had been effective. So several assessments were completed alongside the Japan Atomic Energy Agency, both before and after the cleanup to assess the effectiveness of the measures taken. So this application really illustrates that repeatability and how important that is. So, because the exact same path could be followed, meaning that those results were directly comparable. So you have an accurate map of the radiation levels before the cleanup, after the cleanup. This was conducted over about four or five different flights. So another application is in the mining sector, where the ARM system has been used effectively for both prospecting and environmental surveying. So an example here is in Arizona, where an ARM system was used to track the area in which copper could be found, as trace amounts of uranium were present in the copper. So you can see here from that image, you can see the level, you can see that the level of radiation has increased, and you can see where that copper is, is in the ground. A further example is in Cornwall, whereby an environmental survey could take place to assess the radiation being emitted by discarded rocks in a tin mine to ensure that radiation levels are below the regulatory requirement. So you can see here again, you can clearly see where those um, discarded rocks are and the levels of radiation that they're emitting. You'll be able to get all of this information in counts per second and get that spectral data associated with it as well. So overall, radiometric surveying can be used to find gold, copper, cobalt, phosphates, coal, oil shells, rare earth elements, uranium, thorium, and potassium salts. So in addition to those specific case studies that I've mentioned where the ARM system was used um, really effectively, the ARM system can also be used to um, perform rapid emergency response monitoring of radiation events for routine monitoring of nuclear installations throughout the life cycle for monitoring radiation in the oil and gas industry, for environmental monitoring of radiation hazards, for searching for rare earth elements, and defense and homeland security operations. So the detector inside the ARM system, as I've mentioned before, is a high resolution, high sensitivity detector, already used in many applications in the civil nuclear sector. 
The high resolution spectroscopic detectors, they're ideal for use within drone based systems because they have a really small form factor. They're really lightweight with weights as low as 60 grams, as you can see. They're fully self contained and USB driven with an inbuilt MCA. So the fact that the detectors are USB driven means that there's no need for an additional power source. So at the top of the screen, there you can see the GR1 family. Uh, that's based on CZT crystals manufactured by Chromec in the manufactured by Chromec here at our facilities. Uh, these detectors have superior resolution. There's both a, two, a less than 2.5% and less than 2% resolution option available. So this gives the ability to transfer high resolution radiation spectra, uh, which can be relied upon to identify and analyze complex mixtures of isotopes. These detectors have a lightweight of 60 grams and a very small size, uh, making them ideal for use in aerial mapping. They don't take up much space. They're really lightweight to be lifted by the drone. They're quite unobtrusive apart from their really powerful detector technology. So the Sigma family of detectors also have a small form factor and lightweight design. Again, this makes them ideal for use in aerial and unmanned mapping solutions. They utilize either a two inch or a one inch cesium iodide scintillator alongside silicon photomultiplier technology. As part of a well-established technology, it's been built here at Chromac for over eight years. The Sigma detector, the Sigma family of detectors is used most effectively in areas where there's low activity because of its really high level of sensitivity. The TN15, uh, builds on this lightweight small form factor scintillator and, and silicon photomultiplier technology as a solid state neutron detector and it has its equivalent in both sensitivity and accuracy to helium-3. So just a little bit I did mention before about the two ways that the um, data can be viewed. So it can be viewed on a mobile phone application as seen here. There are apps available for iOS and can be used to map the, the data in real time to show the location of higher levels of radiation. Uh, the counts per second and the spectral data can be viewed directly on the app. So you can see here that you're getting that, you're getting that heat map showing that slightly higher level of radiation and you're also getting that spectral data which you can view really easily there. The data can be extracted in CSV or JSON file formats, meaning that it's really easy to integrate this into existing systems. This includes ArcGIS. So the second option that you have here when viewing the data is a desktop-based software. Uh, this is used and can be built into existing situational awareness platforms. The data is recorded at one hertz and all LiDAR and positional information is transferred. So again, you're going to be able to extract those CSV and JSON file formats for integration into your existing systems, including ArcGIS. So the ARM system can be used with different communications and data hosting options. Um, so all security and logistical customer requirements are met. So this is a little bit about what I was talking about in that block diagram where I went through those different options. I'm just going to elaborate a little bit further here. So with regard to the possible communications options, we have GSM. This uses the 4G network. Um, data can be transferred in real time. So you're getting that uh, real time view. You're seeing exactly what's happening on that drone or on that rover or other system as it's moving around a building or performing some aerial mapping. You're able to transfer both spectral and counts per second data. So you are able to see all of that in real time. You're able to get that spectral transfer as well. Uh, data is also stored on board the ARM system for later transmission. So if 4G signal was lost for any reason, you would be able to, um, that data wouldn't be lost. It would be saved on the ARM system. The uh, radio communications option. So data can be viewed on an in-range laptop with a plug-in receiver unit. So this is a good option when 4G signal isn't available. 
but you still want to get that sort of real time transfer of data. For USB, there's also USB transfer. So this is a physical USB stick, which is plugged into the um, ARM system and it can be used to save all of the data and it can be transferred to a computer post flight. Uh, you also have an option of a Wi-Fi access point where all of that information can be transferred uh, when, the, when the system is in range. So in terms of the data hosting, we have the option for data to be hosted on a secure Amazon Web Services server in any country that has an AWS server. Additionally, uh, we can we can help to facilitate it being the data being hosted on the customer's own server if this is required. Finally, the USB option gives you the ability to transfer that data directly without actually having the need for data hosting. So you do have the option to use that server if it's required or to have the data directly transferred from the unit to a computer without that server um, requirement. So just a little bit about the RAD Rover system. I know that I've mentioned this a little bit before. Uh, this has the same benefits as the drone-based systems, but in that it can build up really comprehensive radiation maps. Uh, the main difference between the two is the use of a RIAS system and the use of SLAM LiDAR. However, the same functionality as an ARM system on a drone is possible with an ARM system on a, on a rover. Obviously, this is ideal for in locations when you can't actually use a drone, for example, um, in a building. So I'm just going to um, show a little video here to kind of um, talk through all of the different options that are available. It kind of shows that technology that we've talked about already and all of the different ways that the um, the technology can be used. So we have those different options that we've discussed, which the more standard multi-rotor drone with an arm system, which can fly around an area, the fixed wing drones, which can be used, and the rovers. So this is just an example of different um, technology being used in conjunction. So you can see here that a fixed wing drone is being used uh, fly around the Red Forest in Ukraine. Um, you can see you're getting a really comprehensive map there with really tight lines and being able to adequately map 100% of the region. It's being able to take off and land in safe areas with low radiation. The pilot is being able to pilot that drone from a safe location. They're not actually having to go into the Red Forest. Again, you see in the way that different types of detector of the arm system can be used. And you're getting that really comprehensive map with that counts per second and spectral data associated with it. Okay, so just a bit of a summary of all of these benefits and what we've discussed so far. So the ARM system uses the proven highly sensitive detector technology to give accurate and repeatable measurements and heat maps. There's the ability to perform real-time mapping so that the acquired data can be viewed immediately. The communications and data hosting options are really flexible so you can meet the customer need and ensure that any security or logistical concerns are met. The small form factor and the lightweight design of both the ARM system and the inbuilt detector make it ideal for use on drones and rovers. And overall, the ARM system can perform radiation mapping at a level never seen before. As we've seen in the Red Forest in Chernobyl, you get in that, you get in a level of analysis that hasn't been able to be completed before. By protecting the individual and collecting accurate data, the ARM system can be relied upon to allow you to make informed decisions and to make the best decision in the best scenario, in different scenarios. Okay, thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to listen to the webinar. Um, if you want to discuss this technology or you have any other questions about any of our different te detector technology, 
then please get in touch with us at sales at chromic.com. Uh, we also have some other events coming up in the future and um, some different webinars and different conferences that we're going to be at. Our next webinar coming up is our D5 RID launch. And you can find information about that at our website. We'll also be at several conferences, including the IEEE Virtual and NCT Virtual Asia. Okay, so yeah, thank you for listening to that. I'm just going to go through um, some of the questions that I can see kind of popping up here. Lots of questions, that's great. So at what height does the ARM system work best? Okay, so the ARM system can be used at any height. It can be used with heights up to 100 meters in line with sort of drawn flight um, regulations in each country. But you get optimal performance at heights below 30 meters. So the idea with this is to fly the drone as low as you possibly can um, to get the most accurate data. Um, but we know this isn't always possible. There's obstacles in the way. And so you have to fly it at various heights at some point. So the use of the inverse square law means that the level of radiation is corrected so as if it was like one meter above the ground. So you, you are getting that consistent uh, level of radiation data, even if you are flying at higher heights, but we do recommend under 30 meters. Okay. Um, so is it possible to change the communication option that I choose at a later date. So yes, this is this is entirely possible. So if you, for example, if you choose to have just a USB transfer um, at first, and that's the option that you go for, it is very easy to upgrade this to 4G communications at a later date. Um, yeah, it's, so someone's asked, is any level of encryption given on the set when using the server? Yes, uh, the server uses encryption key management and this is offered. Um, obviously we're using the Amazon Web Ser Services servers as well. Um, this includes, so the encryption key management that we offer, uh, that includes AES 256 encryption which is used to secure each session and um, RSA 4096, which is um, RSA 4096 based encryption keys, which are changed every three months. Okay, so uh, what drones can be used with the ARM system? Almost any drone is suitable for use with the ARM system. As I've said, you've got that You've got a one kilogram payload. Um, you can have that adaptable mounting plate and it's very easy to install the drone onto the arm system onto any drone that you might have. Obviously, the only consideration to have is that if there's a drone with cameras already underneath, you have to have the physical space to accommodate the payload. And okay, look. Um, so at what distances does the radio mode of communication work? So it works at distances up to 15 kilometers. So as long as the receiver unit is within this range, you'd be fine to use the radio communications. And I think we have time maybe for one more. So yeah, any other questions I will get back to you on. So how do I ensure that I'm getting full coverage of an area? So, um, yeah, it's, it's, this ARM system can give you 100% coverage. We do recommend that the line spacing that you program the flights to take is the same as the height that you're flying the drone at. And this should ensure a full coverage of a site. Okay, um, that's all I have time for at the moment. But I, as I said, I will get back to you with any other questions that we haven't managed to answer in this time. I do see that there's quite a lot of questions. We will make sure we get back to all to you on all of those. 
Um, you will receive the recording uh, that we've taken and the slides. They'll all be sent out to everyone who has um, registered for the webinar. And just as a point, there will be a short survey at the end of the of the webinar. We would be really grateful if you could um, fill that out. Thank you again for taking the time out to join in with our webinar.